Hello there, welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Kipco British Champions Day betting preview here on attheraces.com. And I'm delighted to welcome uh, both men from attheraces.com, Declan Ricks and Simon Rowlands. And it's great to see the two gentlemen there uh, in, the, in the screens. They're looking well. We'll, look, we'll crack on because there's obviously a lot to get through. Uh, guys, let's start off with the Kipco Champion Stakes. Bear in mind that the, the ground will be drying up between now and uh, racing on Saturday, so it's rather hard to sort of predict what the conditions will be like. But if we check out uh, the prices, we'll see that uh, Mishrif, who was oh so impressive in the Jubmont last time we saw him, is a 7-4 to favourite. Adiar, we're not sure at the moment whether well, he's a, a confirmed runner or not. He's said to be in extremely good shape at 5 to 2. Last year's defending champion, uh, Adabe, 13 to 2, 91 snowfall. And Dubai Honor, who's supplemented for 75 grand, uh, is in there at 12 to 1, 14 is bar those. Simon, what are your thoughts? Hello there. Yeah, um, it promises to be a cracking race. Uh, Mishrif, for me, has put up the best performance of the entire season so far when he won the international stakes. Last time by five lengths, uh, a better performance than when he was beaten by Adiar at this uh, course, but over two furlongs further. Um, and they set a really high standard. I really hope Adiar does uh, take part. I think he'll be OK at 10 furlongs, provided he can uh, get a good pace to run at um, and settle rather better than he did early on in the arc. I must admit, however, that I am interested in the horse who was supplemented for this race, uh, the champion stakes, which is Dubai Honor. It was another horse who ran at the ARC meeting, um, and he showed some uh, explosive late sectionals to uh, win the pre-dollar from Magni Corps last time. But these two, Adar and Mishrif, particularly Mishrif, do set a high standard for sure. Yeah, it's a fascinating uh, prospect that Adiar could easily turn and turn up again after his run in the arc, uh, Declan. I mean, he, he was a bit fresh that day, clearly, but it might just have put him spot on for this, ironically. Uh, yeah, quite possibly, Mike. Yeah, it's been interesting there, just uh, overnight there, um, Monday into Tuesday, he, he was there was quite a bit of money around from, so I'm, I'm wondering, is a decision being made and he, he is going to run? Um, yeah, I agree. I don't think the arc panned out too great for him. You know, the ground was softer than ideal. There wasn't enough pace on and he was probably just over racing a little bit. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, I was really disappointed with him in, in the final furlong. Uh, which is kind of contrasting to what we've seen, we saw about him in the King George and the Derby because he was he was relentless. You know that the last furlongs in some of these races have been his best. So I think you could be you could be onto something there that he, he might actually improve for the arc run. Funnily enough, you know he's a big he's a big horse as you can see on the BT there. He, he you know just the cobwebs might be blown away now and he might just be that little bit fitter. But the drop and trip is gonna be, is, is not ideal. Um, you know Simon said there he he'd, he'd want some. He'd, He'd be interested in Nadia and potentially if um, if there's some pace for him to run at. But I can't see a lot of pace in here, Mike. Um, it could be a pretty tactical race. And with him dropping in trip, Adiar, I think that will be against him unless William Buick goes out and makes all of that at a good, honest gallop. So uh, it's a fascinating race. But Mishrif is definitely the right right favourite for me. Um, you know, he's been getting, apart from the run in the Eclipse, where I don't think he was fit and he didn't like the slow pace. Uh, he's been getting better and better. And, you know, he doesn't have too much to find with Adiar on the King George run. Uh, he, had, had a, he had a worse trip than Adi that day. I think he was three or four wide coming into the straight and he was also in a worse tactical position, gave him three or four lengths. But this drop in trip, I think, but just plays more to the strengths of Mishrif. And I think he's going to take a, 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 hell of, a hell of a lot of beating. And, you know, he's the one for me is, uh, as John Gostin looks to, to wrestle back the, uh, um, the, the lead in the, the trainers' championship. Since we saw the arc just then, we saw um, Snowfall, whose who's last furlong effort there rather petered out, disappointingly, I thought. Uh, but I thought Sealyway was an eye-catcher. His first start since the pre du Jockey Club when he was beaten by St. Mark's Basilica. He's never going to stay 12 furlongs on pedigree, but maybe this 10, the stiff 10, could be ideal for him. What, what, what are your thoughts on that, Simon? Yeah, I agree with you. And um, he's... Definitely not too far off the pace in this. Um, I didn't think he would run as well as he did in the arc. I think Declan um, actually quite fancied him and a few other people. And um, for a long way, he travelled really, really well in that. Um, but I think, yeah, back to 10, 
His form this season, I know he got uh, ran into St. Mark's Basilica uh, two starts ago, but that basic form of the uh, pre de Jockey Club wasn't all that good. And I thought the Sealy way we saw uh, in Paris a couple of weeks ago was more like the Sealy way we saw this time last year. Nonetheless, I do think that he's up against really stiff opposition here. Arguably, Mishriff is better than anything that actually ran in the arc. Yeah, I think you're probably right, guys. Let's, let's, uh, let's have a look at the selections then of the three of us. I think we're going to be fairly, fairly boring on this one. But um, Mishriff is, uh, is the overall fancy of the panel here. And I have to say, he's, I think he's going to be very hard to beat. Don't forget, watch the Kipco Champion Stakes uh, live on Sky Sports Racing at 3.50 on uh, Saturday. Let's move on then to the uh, QE2, which is the top mile race on the card, of course. Another Group 1 and uh, Palace Pier, who was only third last year, don't forget, is a 7-4 favourite, up against the new star Baid at 15-8. The Revenant, last year's defending champion, 13-2. The brilliant Philly Alcohol Free is on 8-1, and it's 12-1 and upwards the rest of them. So, Declan, um, were you impressed with the Revenant? He didn't really get the best of runs last time out, did he, at, at Art during Art Weekend? But he showed that his spark is still there. Yeah, no, I was impressed with him, uh, Mike. I, I thought, you know, as a six-year-old, he, he, he's returned as, as good as ever this season. Um, I think he clocked some pretty pretty good sectionals in, in the closing furlongs to, to nearly run down uh, Real World, who, you know, got a very good ride from Frankie de Tori. Um, and, you know, I think maybe Olivia Pellier, if you gave him that race back again, he, he'd want another go. But, you know, he won this race last year. He's probably a little bit more versatile than we give him credit for. You know, I think when he won this race last year, he um, he wasn't held up. He was given a good ride by Pierre Charles Boudot. He was uh, in a track leader's position in what was a messy race. And I think actually this year we, we could potentially have a, a similar scenario. I can't see a whole lot of pace on here. Um, I think uh, Ben Battle obviously likes to go forward, but whether he'll be going uh, a good enough gallop, you know, Oshin Murphy is... is is uh, is not silly, uh, mm -hmm. at, at least on a racehorse, and he's um, you know he's not going to set this up for anyone. So I could see this race getting pretty tactical, which maybe plays against the the strengths of Palace Pier and maybe plays into the strengths of Boyd. So uh, tactically, it's a it's a fascinating race, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so, so am I, uh, Simon. I mean, Palace Pier is a horse of great distinction, but he doesn't he hasn't quite elevated himself to greatness yet. Is this his big chance to do that? Do you think? Yes, it certainly is. I thought he might be totally unstoppable this year. And whilst he's won four out of four, he, um, he hasn't absolutely annihilated his opposition. Um, one perception is that he doesn't have a great turn of foot, but that isn't true at all. His defeat of Pinatubo and Wichita in St. James's Palace Stakes last year absolutely um, refutes that. Um, but he's priced up. Um, on what is known about him, which is that he's a very good horse, but perhaps not quite a superstar. Um, up there in the betting with him is Bayid, mm. who really hasn't achieved as much as him. Uh, he, Bayid has looked really impressive against lesser opposition, uh, but last time I wasn't that impressed by his Prud Moulin when he wouldn't be winning uh, Saturday's race on the form of this. The horses he beat here. Order of Australia, um, Victor Lodorum and Snow Lantern have all run poorly since. And Bay, you know, did it OK, but rather workmanlike fashion. Um, for me, Bay is uh, definitely underpriced by a point or two in this company. Uh, he's going to have to run a good few lengths better than he did in this race that we're looking at now. Mm. Um, in summary, I, I'm definitely as a sec sectionals person I'm particularly interested in the Revenant who I think would have won a couple of weeks ago in Paris by a good two or three lengths had he been given a, a better ride in what was a slowly run race and um, in a race where you quite possibly uh, will have sort of eight to ten runners I think the Revenant's a particularly interesting each way proposition. At that sort of price, I, th I completely agree with you. It's not going to be too bad, the ground, either. I mean, it's softer the better for him, clearly. But a quick word about alcohol-free, gents. We haven't talked about her. She's had a wonderful season. Declan? 
Yeah, no, she she's had a wonderful season, but she she's been busy, Mike. Um, and she was she was disappointing in the in, in the the Judmonts before even uh, the potential stamina issues came into play. I didn't think she travelled like she did, and it was interesting. Ken Peterson, who was interviewed on course that day, in his opinion, he thought she was running up a little bit light, so uh, physically. So you just wonder as the season maybe kind of getting uh, getting to her. To be fair, she's had a bit of a break. Um, so Andrew Balling's had a bit of time to freshen her up and uh, maybe you know allow her to physically improve and and whatnot. But you know she's had a long year and um, you know Andrew Balling is another trainer who's still in the in in the in the race for the trainers championship. So you know this is his kind of flagship horse. So she kind of really had to run. It's probably going to be her last run of the season. But um, yeah, I, I just I'd be a little bit worried that she's had a, a long year. But if she brings her best form. Uh, she, she's she's in the mix. There is a couple. I think the two with the, the head of the market here, Palace Pier and Baid, they're, they're maybe a little bit shorter than ideal. I agree with Simon. There's probably a little bit of juice in the Revenance price and there's probably even a little bit of juice in Alcohol Freeze price. But, um, you know, as I said, she's had a she's had a long year. She brings her best. What she did in the in the Sussex Stakes, she she won't be far away. And uh, and a tactical race, which I think this will play turn out to be, would probably suit her uh, much better than than a few in here. Okay, so in conclusion, then your selection would be. Yeah, my selection is actually going to be by Eid here. Um, I, I agree with Simon that his bare form needs improving. But if you go back and watch all his runs, when this horse gets to the front, the two ears go up and he's been winning with a lot in hand. Um, it would be interesting to get a quick line on him in terms of his sectionals because, um, you know, I, I do incorporate them into my form study, but I'm definitely not an expert like Simon. But he, I think there's been a good few races this year where he's put some pretty sensation sectionals in. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm just, I think the race is going to suit him. It's going to turn into a speed test. Jim Crowley needs to give him a, a real, real ballsy ride. Be brave. Ride him like he's a superstar. And I think he could just do Palace Beer for a little bit at all. Fascinating. Simon, do your sectionals back that sort of assessment up? Uh, yeah, but he does, uh, doesn't suffer... Uh, by comparison and sectionals, but I think that actually applies to Palace Pier and the Revenant as well. Um, he's up against the big boys here, Baid, and whilst it was a Group 1 last time, I think this is a, a Group 1 plus, really, and uh, just a little bit more for him to do. OK, and so you think the most likely winner is? I'm not sure about the most likely winner, uh, but my idea of the best bet is the Revenant. OK, all right. And I think Palace Pier might take some beating. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can bet on the QE2 on our dedicated a Ascot uh, microsite at theraces.com slash Ascot. And also comment on who, you, on who you'll think will win the Queen Elizabeth II stakes on Saturday. So uh, do have a look at that if you can. Let's move on to the champion sprint then, which uh, is another cracking great contest. Let's check out the betting on this. It's uh, over six furlongs, of course, on Saturday. And Art Power, Dragon Symbol and Rohan, well, they can't separate them at the moment in a wide open renewal. Uh, Creative Force is in there. He seems to have danced every dance at six to one. Minzal and Kinross at tens. Kinross dropping back in trip. Ben Sheila has been a, it's a bit disappointing. Uh, last year's winner, 16 to one. Um, Simon, let's start off with you. What, what, what are your overall views of this one? Yeah, um, of those market leaders, I would be most interested in Art Power, who uh, was in danger of becoming a bit of a follower over the cliff horse for me. He came good last time at a slightly lower level at the Curra, where they didn't ride him into the ground for once, um, just held <laughs> on to him. He led approach in the final furlong and storm clear. I think he should be favourite in this, really. Uh, I'm not so interested in Rohan, who I think flattered to deceive a little bit visually um, having blown the start last time but having said all that I think this is a race that could provide a little bit of a turn up um, we're just looking at Rohan now in one of his good days but this is against handicappers and certainly a strongly run six furlongs on a stiff track like Ascot sees him in a, a really good light he arrives late and I think there's going to be plenty of pace on in the sprint, not necessarily in one or two of the other races on Saturday. And this is Rohan at his best, but in all probability, he's going to have to find a couple of lengths more in this kind of company. Mm. The horse that I'm most interested in is uh, actually wasn't on that betting is around about 25 to one as we speak, is called Gustavus Weston. 
who um, is rather in and out, suited by good soft ground or softer possibly. Um, but two starts ago, he um, won a race in Ireland under a penalty, beating two horses, including a case of you, who have both won since, and a case of you won the Abbey, of course, uh, at a furlong shorter. Now, Gustavus Weston, on his day, would probably just about deserve to be in single figures. We can't get to tell for sure whether it's going to be his day, but um, I think there's um, enough upside to take a chance with a horse like that in a race that is clearly pretty open, judged by the betting and also in terms of ratings and the like. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, and Declan, of course, we, we don't know about the draw yet at this particular stage either, which makes things quite complicated. But um, give us your overview of this as things stand. Yeah, exactly. It's probably it's a little bit hard to have a concrete opinion because, you know, in these sprint races, you, you generally need everything to go right. You need to be drawn on the right side, you know, get good cover and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, as Simon's already touched on, in, co in contrast to the, the two races we've already previewed, they, they, there looks to be a hell of a lot of pace on here. You know, Art Power, Zano, Glenn Shield, Gustav, uh, Gustav Weston likes to go forward, Nando Parado. I feel princess so um you know this race it'll probably suit a hold up horse um look i haven't got a strong opinion without the without the decks uh, and then without the draw and and the ground but i would give a mention here to a horse i think is overpriced uh in in happy romance you know i th i mm. think the sprinting division in in europe is definitely not as strong as uh, as some some would make it out you know i think starman you know there was ter there was quotes kind of comparing him to usain bolt you know i think that's kind of that was definitely flattering the horse somewhat you know now batash is retired you know i do think we've got a, a pretty mundane group of sprinters in europe again sadly and i don't you know as simon again's already touched on i this race could uh, we could have a turn up uh, and happy romance is the one I, I would give a good nod to it there i think she's she's definitely overpriced at 20 25 to 1 uh, she comes here on the back of a career best effort in in the haydock sprint cup behind emirati ama uh, emirati anna should i say and you know she's going to get this pace run uh, this race run to suit she's going to get loads of pace to run at uh, look she does need to improve again and um, i do think she's a, a european horse that would you know would love the American and Australian type farm ground. I don't think the ground can be quick enough for this mare. Um, so that's just a little worry. I, I wouldn't back her now. I think we might get four and five places when decks come out. Yeah. And just and the other thing with that is we just need to keep an eye on the weather as well. If it stays dry from now until Saturday, that will uh, that will enhance her chances uh, incredibly. OK, I'm a massive Happy Romance fan as well. She's so genuine and likeable. She's always, always trying her best. So Happy Romance is uh, Declan's uh, interesting selection. Simon's gone for Gustavus Weston at prices. Uh, I'm going to stick with Rohan if he gets the breaks. I think he's the most talented in the lineup. But we'll move on now to the uh, Champions uh, Phillies and Mares. Don't forget, you can watch the, uh, the Champions Sprint on uh, live on Sky Sports this racing this Saturday at 2 p.m. And also leave us uh, your opinion in the comments section as well as to who you think will win. Here's the betting on the Champion Phillies and Mares then. Free Wind, who was mightily impressive at the Doncaster St. Ledger meeting in the Park Hill, 11 to 4. La Petite Coco, 3 to 1. Love who's maybe not quite the force she was at four. Snowfall, well, she might just go for another race at nine to two. Alba Flora nines and tens bar those. Um, he also includes Search for a Song in there at 14 to one, who's also got uh, an entry in the, the two-miler as well. Uh, Declan, let's start off with you first then, because should we start off with a favourite? Yeah, yeah, no, no worries, Mike. Yeah, um, as you've already touched on again, she she was very impressive at, at, at Doncaster. Um, She's just improved out of all recognition, Free Wind. You know, uh, she, she's by Galileo, so maybe we shouldn't be too surprised. She's got a good pedigree, but she, she's a really, really likable filly. She travels for fun. She's pretty straightforward, apart from maybe just taking a little bit of a hold in the in the in the early parts of her races. But um, she, yeah, she's just improved out of all recognition. Visually, this day she was sensational, and you know, even though she, they, she was running in an extended 14 furlongs off what was a, a, a nice enough gallop. Uh, she's managed to clock some pretty smart sectionals. So, you know, she's a classy filly going the right way. Uh, the, the one maybe little worry with her is I, I do think she's much better on this day when she won at Doncaster. It was pretty, it was good to firm, proper good to firm ground. And as we know, the round course at Ascot generally rides a little, uh, quite a bit slower than the straight track. So maybe uh, she would prefer 
um, better ground. But look, it's we, it looks like we're going to be blessed with the weather this year, and it's you know it's not going to be a quagmire. Thanks, thanks for uh, thankfully. So yeah, she she's um, she's got to be high on the list. But I do think it, the best of free wind, the best of Le Petit Coco, and the best of love. There there isn't a lot to separate them, and I think mm. on the day uh, it's going to turn out who the race plans for. Uh, the best tactically and who's just in the best form so yeah this is a this is a good race i'm really looking forward to it and at least we know that free wind is heading here simon the trouble is you know, one or two of the others we don't know yet do we they're doubly declared so it complicates things a touch it does and for that reason i'm hoping to be able to stand this one out um Free wind is is the best of those. With uh, definitely aiming for this, but um, for instance, snowfall for me uh, would probably win this, despite having been beaten in the art last time. She ran really pretty well, and I think she'd be a slightly superior filly to free wind. There's been some money for snowfall, so it's definitely a possibility that she will run here. Mm. But um, until the picture's a bit clearer, I I wouldn't want to pin my colours to any particular mast. OK, all right then. Well, um, what's, your, what's your view finally, Simon, about um, love and how she's been this season? I mean, she's not quite been the sensational filly she was as a three-year-old. Oh, uh, on my figures, she's about four or five pounds below what she was last year. But I think rather like with Snowfall this year, a lot of fuss was made about a filly dominating second or even third-rate rivals. Um, looking really good, but it's a whole different ball game against you know older horses and also against males. And to a degree, love has been shown up. Although I think the love of last year would have made a better fist of it than she has done this year. Okay, guys. So uh, it's, it's tricky to work out what's going to run, let alone have a tip there. If, if free wind turns up in that sort of form, though, surely she must go close. I would have thought. You can bet. Uh, the Phillies and Mayors on a dedicated Ascot microsite at theracescom slash Ascot and also leave uh, your opinion about the most likely winner in the comments section as well. We'll move on then to the, uh, the long distance race which gets things underway, uh, the long distance cup and uh, it promises to be a, a real cracker if they all turn up that is. Um, True Shan on the back of his win in the Cadran where he defeated Stradivarius is the 7-4 to four favourite. Strad is back 5-1, to one. it may be his last race. Hamish, a fascinating contender. So too is Search for a Song, who's drying up. The, the ground drying up, Simon, I would have thought, would be really good for Search for a Song, because I don't feel as though when she was second to Trushan a year ago that soft ground really plays to her strengths. Possibly so. Um, there were seven and a half lengths in it. Trushan this time last year was something else. And nothing that I've seen this year suggests to me that the Trushan of this year is any worse than he was last year. He, he took a little bit of a while to get on top in the cadre, uh, which we're watching at Longchamp, but in the end, he was really good. And he's a horse of immense ability. And to be honest, I don't think um, even the search for a song that we saw the other day, which was a rather improved version than the one we'd been seeing earlier this year, would would unduly trouble True Shan at his best. Um, the softer the ground, possibly the better with Trushan, but there's actually not that much evidence that he needs a bog or anything like that. He's got winning form a bit further back on good, good to soft ground, and I think there's a good chance he'll have his conditions. Um, one of the slight concerns where Trushan's concerned uh, over his recent runs has been that he doesn't switch off all that well early, but mm -hmm. there promises to be quite a bit of pace here. Uh, Aidan O'Brien's got... Um, a, a horse that oft, generally makes a run in at a strong pace um, and there are others uh, in the field who are likely to push it as well I think so I think it'll be relatively easy for Trushan to be uh, dropped in and drop his bit and hopefully and I, I think there's a reasonable chance he might be able to repeat what he did last year it'd be very impressive if he, if he could do it as spectacularly as he did 12 mm. months ago yeah, he's a very exciting stayer, Trusha. I love watching him. Um, because so Declan, it was only a fortnight ago the Cad ran. It wasn't an easy race that day, although he made it look easy. But has he had enough time to recover? Has Strad had enough time to recover? Well, that 
that'd be my worry too, Michael. I think, you know, in terms of form, absolutely no doubt True Shannon is the best horse in the race. Um, but look, he's not a horse who gives himself an easy race um, the, the whole time. He can take a hold. And, you know, the last day he was running over t- uh, two miles, four furlongs on, on kind of soft ground. So, um, you know, back, I suppose the, the question of whether he can back up, I think we'll, we'll only find out on Saturday. But because of that question and given the price, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to take him on. Um, I'm, I think Baron Samady here is, is going to enjoy, even though his pedigree doesn't suggest, especially on his distaff side, doesn't suggest that he wants to go up and trip. Mm. Um, he did win. He has won over this trip, albeit in America, which probably wasn't the, the most demanding stamina test. But I, I think based on his Saint, Irish St. Ledger run, I think Baron Samady is going to enjoy stepping back up. Uh, the other thing with him, I, I think he's, he'll enjoy some pace. He can take a little bit of a hold early in his race. Um, and he's a horse that I think they, they got the tactics wrong earlier in the year when he when he raced against Broome in France. They, they pushed him forward with no cover. And I just think he's a horse who likes to settle into his race, um, get some pace to run at and, and kind of do some of his best work late. So I think this race sets up really well here for Baron Samady. He comes here fresher than Trushan. And also Stradivarius. It doesn't matter what the ground will be for him. He's he's very versatile in that regard. Um, and look, on all known form, he can't be Trushan. But if Trushan is a little bit off his game and Baron Samadhi improves just a little bit in terms of going up and trip uh, and is fresher, uh, that brings them closer together. And I think he's a, he's a decent each way bet on the day, Baron Samadhi. But we're going to need a little bit of luck with, with Trushan not running uh, up to his full his full potential. OK, Um Right, Simon, just a quick word. I think we, we must mention Hamish. I, I do like Hamish. We don't see him very often, but he's clearly very smart. And, um, and Manobo's had a good season as well, of course. Yeah, um, not going to knock either of those. They're both horses with potential. Hamish beat Hookham at Kempton last time, and um, that looks on the face of it really good. But um, Hookham uh, apparently made a noise on that occasion when he ran at Ascot the other day he looked a completely different horse so mm. I think the bare form of the Kempton race possibly isn't top class with Hamish and that he's got to find a good few lengths here that's not out of the question but it wouldn't be for me uh, Manobo has looked tremendous against uh, in fairly ordinary opposition and last time he landed the odds but it was a little bit hard work it was a very messy race but um, for me, I didn't think he was a horse ready to win a race like this just yet. But he remains quite an exciting prospect for the future. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised Hookham himself wasn't actually declared for this, but he wasn't. So there you go. Um, we, before we go then, gents, so as things stand at the moment on the Long Distance Cup, Deck, your, your selection is Baron Samadhi each way? Yeah, Baron Samadhi each way. And it might be worth taking a little gamble on him maybe back in a Manti post. We, we might lose out on terms of place betting on the day because there might be a big field. But, you know, it's not an absolute definite here that Stradivarius and Trushan run. So um, it might be worth just having a, li- a small little swing on him anti post when hope we, we get lucky. OK, and Simon, sticking with Trushan? I'm, I'm sticking with Trushan. I've gone with longer-priced horses in some of the other races, but I think Trushan's the nearest thing to um, a banker. OK. Fantastic. So let's get to Declan's best bets of the meeting. Deck. Yeah, good. Uh, we'll start in the first race. We'll go with uh, Baron Samadhi each way. Uh, just probably no need to uh, waffle on. I already kind of hopefully gave a, a, a bit of a case about him. Uh, then in the, the Phillies and Bears, uh, Le Petit Coco, uh, she's been progressing all season. You know, she did beat Love the last day, although she was getting three pounds for her. But I thought she did incredibly well to run down Love uh, over a trip that pro- maybe just suited Love a little bit more, although Love was probably better over 12 furlongs as well. She's progressing. She's progressed with every race. She's straightforward tactically. Uh, she's got a wonderful attitude as well. And I think uh, getting some cut on the round course at Ascot will will really suit her. And then in the QE2, Bayid, we've touched him already. Uh, I, I agree with Simon with, in, the, in what he says, that Palace Pier has got the best form but I think the best for the best of Palace Piers brought out when we see him with cutting the ground and a strong run race uh, we, good ground won't be an excuse for him but I just think a tactical race might play into the hands of Bayid and that's why I'm just going to give him the nod OK and uh, over to Simon Yeah um, Trushan deserve, deservedly a pretty short price favourite in the long distance cup I think he's teed up to do what he did 12 months ago. Uh, 
a real outsider in Gustavus Weston in the Champions Sprint that I'm hoping that he'll turn up and deliver his A game, which he doesn't always do. Um, he's certainly a contender if he does. I think the Revenant is um, still a good bet to take on the two at the front of the market, Palace Pier and Baid in the QE2. And the recently supplemented Dubai Honour deserves a crack at the big time in the Champions Stakes. And whilst he's got a bit to find with Mishrif in particular, I think Dubai Honour can definitely run into a place. Yeah, he's done nothing but improve, Simon, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to quickly sc scan through mine. No nothing particularly spectacular. If the mayor search for a song goes for the opening long distance cup, I think she'll run very well indeed. Uh, but I do think that uh, John Gosden and Frankie Dettori will have a good day. Uh, free win, Palace Pier, Mishrif and Sunray Major, all trained by John and Thady Gosden. Um, but, I mean, that's the sort of four-timer that you have to dream of, isn't it? That's how things stand at the moment. Uh, don't forget, you can read Sky Sports Racing's... Um, Holly Dawes' views on Trushan and the rest on uh, at theracescom slash Holly. My thanks to both Simon and Declan. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, the whole meeting is live on Sky Sports Racing on Saturday.